Hello everyone, what's up? In this Photoshop tutorial I want to show you how you can create HDR panoramic images using the Adobe Camera Raw Editor. And I want to show you this because I didn't know you can do this myself and I think there might be other people in the same situation. So let's start by heading to File, Open, then let's look for the images. All right, here you can see I have shot a vertical panorama sequence with bracketed HDR shots. That means for every vertical image, there are three different exposures. And now we simply have to select them all just like this. Let's not forget this one. And then I'm simply opening them. Now Photoshop will load every single file into the camera raw editor. Does look a little bit like Lightroom. And it also actually functions the same way. With my HDR panoramic sequence selected down there, I can simply right click on one of the thumbnails and then just say merge to HDR panorama. For me, it now says it's not able to select the lens profile. That's because there's an adapter between the lens and my camera that I'm using but I think that's not really a big deal, so I'm just hitting OK. Of course, depending on your system and how many images you want to merge, this process will take a while, so just be patient here a little bit. And now we basically have the same window as in Lightroom, where we can apply the boundary warp, which will just fill those gaps around the edges. In this case, I don't want to use it since I do have a straight horizon in the image and using the boundary warp will destroy it. I could also just select the fill edges, which will basically apply the Photoshop content aware fill to those gaps. Um, you can do that. I prefer to do it manually later in Photoshop though. Then by applying the auto settings, you're telling Photoshop to automatically adjust the exposure of the image. That means it will adjust the highlights, the shadows and so on. You can of course do this, but I personally just prefer to edit the image myself in most of the cases. And then of course we also have the auto crop, which again, I'm doing manually after merging the image. So once you have adjusted everything, just hit the merge button and that we end up with an image like this. You can see I already have applied some cropping. Basically, I got rid of those gaps around the edges and just nicely framed all the subjects so I do get a balanced looking photo. Now, with the HDR, you do have a very, very high dynamic range. And that means, especially for sunrise images like this, you won't run into problems like over or under exposure since you can simply drop the highlights really, really much and also increase the shadows a ton. And you can see you get back a lot of detail from here without risking any under or over exposure. So that's basically it for the tutorial part. I do want to finish the editing for this shot. So feel free to continue watching. If not, I hope this tutorial was helpful and let's continue with the editing. So let's see, for the white balance, in this case, I want to go with daylight. And I think I'm also changing the profile to Adobe Standard. Then I do want to drop the highlights. And I want to increase the shadows. So we do get some nice detail in this area. Now let's maybe also drop the exposure just a bit. And I think I'm also dropping the whites. Since this is a sunrise image, I want it to be very, very saturated. So let's just boost the vibrance first. Also, I'm dropping the saturation since I feel this just looks better. Let's continue with the local adjustments. You can see I have applied a few gradiated filters already and as usual I want to start with the sky since right now it's a little too bright and I actually want to have some more contrast between the clouds and the blue part of the sky. So for the very top one let's drop the exposure again. Also I'm introducing contrast which will bring out the clouds some more. 
Now I think I could make the clouds a little softer, so let's just drop the texture. We don't need any sharpness in here, so that's totally fine. Also to bring the clouds out some more, I can increase the clarity. And I guess I can just also apply some noise reduction. All right, then let's continue with the sky with the second gradiated filter. Again, let's add some clarity. Also, I'm dropping the texture again. And I want to add some dehaze, which will add contrast in here. Now you can see this area does have a little blue color cast right now. So I'm fixing this by increasing the temperature. That should be enough. And I guess that's it for the sky for now. Now you can see I have a horizontal gradiated filter and that's because this side is rather bright while this side is very very dark and I want to fix that with this gradiated filter and just increasing the whites. That looks pretty good. I do think however I only want to target the darker parts of this area and therefore I'm activating a luminance range mask and I'm just dropping the range here. Just like this. All right, could go a little bit further here by increasing the exposure. Okay, then I also have applied a few radial filters. Let's start in the center, which I want to brighten up by bringing up the exposure. And I'm also dropping the highlights just to prevent overexposure. Okay. Then let's see, I have applied some more radial filters outside of this image. With this bigger one, I want to further drop the highlights and increase the shadows. Okay, and with the next one, I want to introduce some glow by increasing the blacks and dropping the dehaze. All right. I actually want to adjust one of those gradiated filters a bit more by bringing down the exposure and maybe adjust the size of it. Okay. Then let's head to the color mixer tab. And as said earlier, I want to target some more specific saturation values. In this case, I'm dropping the reds. Then let's increase orange tones and I'm dropping the yellow tones as well as the purple tones and the magenta tones. And I guess I'm boosting the blue tones. All right, then let's continue in the color grading tab. And first I want to work on the shadows by applying a cold color tone to them. Let's see, I don't think I need that much saturation here. And I also want to drop the luminance here. And this will make the shadows a little darker and give me more contrast in this image. And let's continue with the mid-tones. Again, I'm aiming for a cold color tone. Let's drop the saturation though. And again, I want to bring down the luminance to introduce some more contrast here. And since this is an HDR image, there won't be any problems by dropping the luminance this much. All right, then for the highlights, of course, I want to apply a nice warm color tone here. Uh, maybe let's turn down the saturation a bit. And here I want to bring up the luminance for more contrast. All right, that looks really nice. And let's sharpen this image real quick. And now we can finish it in Photoshop. First, I need to clean up the sensor spots using the spot healing brush. So let's zoom in here and just paint over those dots. Also, I want to get rid of those flag poles. Then next, I want to work on the water. I want to add a motion blur effect to this. So let's duplicate that layer and 
create a layer mask just for the water. So I'm turning off the visibility of the bottom layer and then activate a layer mask. And let's invert it by hitting Ctrl I. Then with a white brush, I'm just painting over the foreground so I can make a selection for the water. Okay, that should do it. So I can turn back on the background layer and let's duplicate the water layer a few times by hitting Ctrl J. Now I'm turning off the upper copies of this layer and with the first one selected, I'm going to filter, blur, motion blur, and I leave the angle Z to zero so I get a nice horizontal blur and turn up the distance all the way. This does work pretty nicely. I just need to mask out a part right there. And now I do want to drop the opacity slightly. So we do have some more structure, but not too much. Just like this. Right now, of course, it does look like it's a very obvious fake blur. That's why I have duplicated this layer a few times. So next I'm using the second water layer. Again, go to blur, motion blur, but this time I'm just slightly adjusting the angle. So we do have some variation in here. And then again, I'm using the layer mask to get rid of a few areas right here. And again, I want to drop the opacity and then head to the third layer, filter, blur, motion blur, and adjust the angle. Okay, then use the layer mask to mask out a few areas and drop the opacity. Oh, I think the first motion blur layer needs the opacity reduced even further. So this looks pretty decent. That means I can merge those layers now. All right, now let's adjust a few more things here. I guess I want to make the sky a little darker and therefore I'm using luminosity masks. So let me first create a new layer. Now I'm heading to the TK panel which I'm using for those luminosity masks. And I want to target the darks of the sky. That means here I can choose different darks luminosity masks. And I want to mainly target the blues of the sky, which you can see here are those grayish areas. And I think the third one should do its job. So let's hit layer mask and apply the third mask. This mask is now applied to this empty layer of which I'm going to change the blending mode to overlay. And now when I take a dark brush, wait, let's set it to black. I can paint over the sky and this way just darken the dark parts of the area here. Of course, I want to drop the opacity to not make it too strong right away. And then let's just paint over the sky. I could also paint over the foreground in the center, I think. All right, that was really, really helpful as you can see. Let's merge those two layers. And now I want to apply a glow effect using another new layer. And this time go with the soft light blending mode with the brush selected. I'm holding down Alt key to pick up this color tone right there. And let's paint in some glow. Okay, that's enough already. Then I'm merging those two once more. And finally, let's check the Nick Collection plugin. First, I want to introduce some more contrast by using the Pro Contrast filter. So let's add a little bit of dynamic contrast and also correct contrast. Okay, then let's add another filter. And I think I'm going with the tonal contrast. Here I'm resetting those settings. Then let's bring up the midtones. Only a bit. Okay. I guess I want to add one more filter. And this time let's go with brilliance warmth and just add some more warmth to it. 
Okay, and I guess that's it. So let's apply it like that. All right, that looks really cool. So at this point, I'm done editing this image. So I hope this was interesting and helpful. If you have any questions left, feel free to ask in the comments. And thank you very much for watching this video.